Prepare to get your mind blown. There's a bizarre new plan for what could be the world's tallest building, and it's literally out of this world. Instead of being built from the ground up, this futuristic skyscraper will be hanging down from the heavens. Analemma Tower is the brainchild of a New York City design firm. It consists of a tall tower suspended via cables from an asteroid that's been repositioned to orbit the Earth. The wandering skyscraper would be in a geosynchronous orbit, tracing a figure eight path on its daily loop across the northern and southern hemispheres. The proposal calls for the tower to be constructed in Dubai, where costs are lower. Once completed, the massive structure will then be taken to New York via orbital transfer. With the upper part of Analemma constantly exposed to sunlight, power can be harnessed by space-based solar panels, while water can be filtered and recycled. Residential units will be placed two-thirds of the way up, with lower floors reserved for business and entertainment use. The plans don't specify how to get on and off the property, but illustrations suggest people would do so via parachutes. With such an outrageous proposal, there's no telling when or if the hanging tower will ever make it to the real world. Still, you never know. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. There's some pretty wild plans for structures in the future. Check them out. This is what the airport of the future might look like. A UK company has released a concept of what airports will be like by the year 2040, and they look a whole lot more efficient and passenger friendly than today's airports. In the future, airline passengers will be expected to check in via self-service desks, which include biometric scanners that can scan passengers' facial features, iris patterns, and fingerprints in order to verify their identities. After check-in, a biometric token will be issued and stored in the passenger's smartphone. This serves as a boarding pass and ID. Luggage can be checked in at drop-off points. Laser molecular body scanners can detect even tiny quantities of dangerous materials in the passenger's clothing or their luggage without the need for a body search. Passengers may buy duty-free goods from virtual shopping stations and have the goods delivered to their homes. Airports in the future may need to expand their runways and parking facilities to cope with the increasing size of aircraft and the number of passengers. Airport control is likely to be operated remotely from outside the airport, with staff monitoring live video footage of the facility. Upon arrival, passengers will be notified when their luggage is ready for collection. When an airport enters the full self-service phase, passengers will get help from virtual assistants. And in fact, many such technologies are already being implemented. For example, biometric scanners are currently being trialed at Heathrow and Schiphol airports. Floating UFO houseboat to hit waters in 2018. An Italian mini yacht manufacturer has come out with an updated design for their sleek floating villa that's set to be the home of the future. The aptly named unidentified floating object is an off-grid houseboat that's shaped like an alien flying saucer. Twin engines propel the UFO yacht, while built-in solar panels plus wind and water turbines generate electricity to sustain the vessel. The 314-square-meter houseboat will be made from carbon fiber and fiberglass and have three levels. The upper deck will house the controls, as well as a hot tub and desk. The first level will consist of a kitchen and bathroom, while a submerged level will hold the bedroom and another bathroom. Its enormous size means the only way to transport the UFO yacht is via military helicopters. The floating home can be used amid different conditions around the world and is unsinkable even in rough seas. The external deck is customizable and the vessel itself can be used for different purposes, a floating restaurant, gym, even a resort. The UFO yacht is expected to be available by 2018. For now, a Kickstarter campaign is underway to raise 1 million euros to fund the project. Pipe Dream No More Imagine this, a fully automated floating city, free from government meddling, with no laws, regulations, or taxes. Once just a libertarian fantasy, it's now just a few years from becoming reality. On January 13th, French Polynesia agreed to host the world's first floating city, or seastead, within its protected waters. 
The Seastead aims to be a special economic zone that will develop innovative technologies for solar power, aquaculture, and wind energy. Design-wise, the floating city will consist of interconnected square and pentagonal platforms made from reinforced concrete. Platforms will have a variety of structures, from residential and commercial to green spaces, with pricing per square foot on par with major cities like New York or London. The project's initial islands will cost a combined total estimated at $10 million to $50 million and will house a few dozen people. With rising sea levels threatening many Pacific islands, Seastead advocates believe floating cities may be a solution. The presence of floating communities could also spark recovery for the region's dying corals by slightly lowering water temperatures in their vicinity. The Seasteading Institute will have to complete environmental and economic feasibility studies, but construction on the project could start as early as next year. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. The United Arab Emirates wants to build a mountain to solve a drought because why not? If there's one country that likes to think big, it's the United Arab Emirates. When faced with a water shortage, the country is ditching the boring option to conserve and instead has opted to build a huge mountain for more rainfall. Compared to the international average of 170 to 300 liters, an average United Arab Emirates resident uses 550 liters of water daily. This is especially problematic as water in the region is in very short supply due to the arid climate and naturally low rates of precipitation. The government has already turned to artificial methods. $558,000 were spent on cloud seeding in 2015. Now, $400,000 is going towards funding a development plan for man-made mountains. Mountains force air to rise up into the atmosphere. There, air cools and become clouds that can then be seeded for rain. The cloud seeding can have undesirable outcomes such as too much rainfall or none at all. Due to the rain shadow effect, an artificial mountain can inhibit rainfall on one side, causing that area to become more parched. Experts from the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research in the U.S. are in the early stages of the project. A modeling study is being carried out to determine the location, height, and width of the mountain. 20-kilometer high space elevator gets patented in the U.S. and the U.K. A new technology with the potential to change how spacecrafts enter orbit has recently been patented in the UK and the US. To get shuttles into space, rockets currently use large amounts of fuel and usually also carry extra fuel. Canadian firm Thought Technology aims to change that by essentially allowing astronauts to travel partway into space on an electrical elevator. The inflatable structure could, in theory, stand up to 20 kilometers high over 20 times higher than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. From the top, spacecrafts could launch into orbit in a single stage, eliminating the initial need for vertical launch rockets. Inventor Ben Quine told the CBC that the tower could resist lightning, meteors, as well as Category 5 hurricanes. The company's CEO, Carolyn Roberts, believes the invention, along with the development of self-landing rocket technologies, could herald a new era in space transport.